you're going to roll your eyes right now, Kristen, and I know this. She always says this, and there's no guarantees. There's only a couple things that I'll roll my eyes on. I'm willing to bet five large American dollars. Anyways, I started reading this book by Carl Sagan <laughs> that's based on a, a series of essays he wrote about the decline of human intelligence. He wrote it in 1993, projecting how attention spans would go down because of short I've, snippets I've, of media. Yeah, yeah. I, I know I know a tidbit of that. It's, I know what some of his predictions. I don't eye roll. I'm just like, why don't you fucking read some Daniel Steele and get some juices flowing, have some fun, read some Grisham. Keep oh, it easy. That's an interesting I idea. I've never burned through books faster than when I read the Bridgerton series. And now I'm listening to Harry Potter full full left turn Harry Potter on audio with Eleanor so we're dorking out over that I'm just Aww. saying if you got a choice to read a book read one that's going to make you feel something not one that's going to be like yes everything's terrible we got on a plane one time and I had my book which was a World War II um, like what Lesbian is it when it's romance not, not completely well it was a little bit it wasn't completely I haven't finished it which I, <laughs> you still have was four years ago. <laughs> That's how I was with um, what's the book Geisha, uh, Memoirs of a Geisha. Oh uh, my God. That book take, took me seven years to read. My sister was like like a thousand books in. She's like, Jesus, just finish it. And I'm like, I will eventually. I still have it and it has my bookmark in it. And it's literally 20 years Wait, old. Wait, hold on. Are we podcasting? Are we podcasting? I hey, think we are. You thanks for us, joining us at the us, hashtag I Mom So Hard podcast. Could, you caught us mid book talk, which we, uh, we don't quite read enough to actually have a book talk. We can have we read enough to have one podcast about books. Yeah, and Kristen can tell you uh, books that are horny books that she started and not finished. That's not true. I only don't finish the harder books, but the horny books I burn through. Oh, okay. I am okay. a I am a enthusiastic like Grisham Daniel Steele <laughs> like. All of the, not Harlequin, because I'll just find the dirty parts and read them. And I'm reading, currently I have on my nightstand, Carl Sagan's book. Um, Sorry if your underpants just did not blow back when she said that name. Yeah, no, maybe this will do it for Bridgerton you. Bridgerton series, can't read it fast this enough. This is a, a, a study in a, a, about rural education and females that I'm reading. <sighs> And yeah, see, she rolled her eyes. You see, you roll her eyes. You roll my eyes. eyes. Okay. I just feel sorry for you. I'm like, why are you reading that if you're not taking a class? And I had to read all those for grad school. I was like, snooze. And, and then I'm reading one called The Eleven Nations, which is uh, oh, that's a, actually really good. Yeah, it's about like how America's not this melting pot. There's like eleven distinct like yeah types again. Based, yeah, a book I have on my shelf, but not a book I really read. I that's read how I that, and then I just bang the hell out of my husband because that's no, what you does don't it. lies. I don't. No, I know he was because that's so weird. If I you're know. like, God, I just want to read like what, what's what, um, freakonomics and then get it on. You know what? Right? If don't he, if he would talk to me, if we read the same book and then we would lay in bed and talk about it, it might lead to something. I'll tell you right now, my husband and I are never going to read the same book because <laughs> my husband wants to read all the boring ass books. Like I gave detail- him one; he didn't read it yet. Because it's probably not boring enough. I'm like, oh, okay. en- en- enjoy not your life for the hours that you're in this book, man. It's like he loves to read like Freakonomics. And then the other one was, uh, oh, God, it was literally even the book title. I was like, you judge a book by its cover. This cover is the most boring cover I've ever seen in my life. This, I gave him a book that's the uh, psychology of the Sermon on the Mount. Guys, yeah. are you just trying not to have fun? By Emmett Fox. It's Yeah, it's very... It's, I love it's, Us it's, Weekly. I'll go... <laughs> I do not need. I do not need to sit around and talk about hard hitting mental books. I, I want hard hitting, like makes me feel something, like like girls and dresses and men's and tuxedos I and, or I, a courtroom drama. Mm. Look, this could mean that I'm broken, and I understand it. I'm fully aware. I'm just trying of to help the many you. ways in which I'm broken. But like, if I. I prefer documentary. I prefer like some kind of an educational book because I sort of feel like it's time wasted if I don't walk away from it like feeling like I've gained some knowledge or understanding. I from could not it. be you more t- the opposite. I'm Trey like, is nodding his head. Okay, thank God. I if feel I'm like- going to take my ADD medication and I am going to focus, I'm going to focus on happiness and not learning anything. That is how I. There's that. Too. I'm going to pop that medication. I'm going to be able to read like the Dickens, and I'm going to read about. I'll Dickens. T- well, I'll tell you, like, <laughs> the happy medium for me, the happy medium for me between the two would be, like, um, 
Like Slaughterhouse Five. Oh, that's a of course. That's okay. an awesome book. Because that's you know I taught that book. It's man. imaginative. It's sci-fi. There's a little bit of romance in it. Hey, there's listen. religion. It's got all this stuff. But then surprise it's surprise you of my reading repertoire. No, I, I they, taught English. But it's also like you, you do learn stuff. You like really gain like intelligent perspective from that book. So that, I, I like this. those kind. But here's what I will say, and I've said this before. I truly believe that the um, Twilight series changed readers for sure. forever. For sure. And good, that good book, way. on an average, is about a seventh grade level of reading. I have never met a writer, an English writer, that's like, I'm going to use the word nubile 5,000 times. And God bless her for doing so, because when I was teaching, and those books are 300 plus pages. They are thick ass books. Yes. And I had students that would come to me because I taught, you know, in a low income school that was kind of like your last chance to get a, a high school diploma. And these kids were not reading. They, they were barely writing. They were barely reading. Yeah. And those Twilight books came on and they were like the best thing for kids to read that were struggling with where they were at age wise and where, where they were aptitude wise, because it wasn't insulting to them. And it still had storyline yeah, and sort yeah, of yeah. like sexual, like tension and romance and all those things. But yet was 300 pages. So if you wanted to, to know how it ended, you gotta, you gotta stick with it. You're not reading like an eight page short story. And I had kids that had never, ever read a book that burned through those. Great, series. Great. I read more freaking book reports on Twilight. And I've read all the Twilight hey, books. I think they still, I've never read I, the books, but my husband I'm was like, I'm a big fan. He goes, this was like when we, back when we were dating, he goes, you should watch Twilight. I think you'd like it. And I was like, excuse me. It's yeah. for tweens the or whatever. The movies are a little, a little, but well, they're, I at ate the time, them right up. I I'm sure like, you didn't hear and watch this. Laura Davis, and- who, you know, was a merit scholar and went on to like do religious studies. I think she had a t-shirt with Edward's face on it. I'm like, you're I a little mean, too old for that, my he friend. He was like, it's got all the stuff you like. It's like vampires and werewolves and, and, and Porkin. Yeah, so it was right up my alley. Plus, I think I'm, you know, 18. So that, that's, but that's what I'm saying. I think those books, like, I think sometimes um, maybe we all sort of lean into, like, reading has to be this thing that is educational or uh, you have to learn something. And I like that you think that. And I have books like that, like um, the one that we're both reading, uh, Free the Cat. I always say Kill the Cat. That's the bad. Save the Cat. Save the Cat. Yeah, it's It's great. just, a like, kind of a tutorial on how to write scripts yeah i can't read that book fast enough it's, it's like great. A, yeah but that's different that hits a different part of my brain Which whereas is, it's subjects that you find interesting though because yes I, i'll tell you like for this chris and i are writing stuff so i was reading this um book about this haunted house yes. in in new york I, I have not read a book faster than that like, yeah i there's nothing that will like keep me awake at this point in my life where because i'm like oh, it's 11 15 what am i a crazy party person if i had done cocaine but that book kept me up to like two in the morning because i couldn't put it down and yeah. so it's like it's subject matter like if you really find it interesting then it keeps you like my son Oh my God, you guys, he has read 15 of these warrior cat books and I can't think of, you would have to put a gun to my head to get me to read a f- fucking book about a cat, let alone like they're I like, know, because we're not cat people. It's that's the irony here is that he's reading a book about a cat. When, he doesn't even have a cat. He's like, <laughs> I don't understand. Yet. But the kid, the kids I are call reading, it right now. Yet. And, and he's like, he, he goes to do, do his like reading log in class. He's like, um, I think I did 25 minutes and we're like, dash. You read 45 minutes just now and you came home yeah. from school having finished a book. Like, but he's scared to like put the wrong time on there because he's like, you guys have to sign it. And I don't like it's hilarious. But he I mean, he's like, this I go, I don't care what you read, as long as you're reading. I literally don't. It's a hundred percent right. Fifty more warrior cat books, man. I'm I'll cats whatever your cats it is, buddy. That's what I'm saying. Oh boy, this is where I look at me, my arms crossed, and I'm like, yep. and then another thing. When I was a teacher and I taught at this school, it was designed to help kids sort of catch up and then be able to graduate. Yeah. And some would get a the an equivalent um, to, so that you could go on to – you were not allowed to it, – it's not the same as like a regular high school diploma, but when you graduated, you could go to like a junior college or you could go to um, not a UC. Equivalency. Equivalency. Kind of. Thank yeah. you. So it's sort of like – a step above a GED. Yeah. And so the whole idea of the school, which is a continuation school or an alternative education school, is that if you were a student, you came to me and you were in trouble for skipping school or you were whatever, and I needed to 
put a packet together. Let's say that may or may not be true. It was not true. You of uh, me? I you kidding me? I skipped school so much. Jennifer People Smith were told me it was like two days. Is it more than two days? Are you ju- my freshman year? I told Your you freshman year of high school. Yeah, my friend Mike. Mike, I told you his mom came in. I was ironing my hair on her ironing board because I had a really bad perm, and it was like, yeah, I was naughty. I was in detention so much that Mister Pasco. Yeah, Mister Pasco goes, "What were you sick?" If I wasn't there, I was yes. But that's the thing. The dean would be like, "I don't understand it. You have like excellent grades. That's the thing. Like, but- you're active and everything. But man, you skip school all the time." And I'm like. Mm? You're like, oh, let me, let me. Barbara doesn't need to know this, does she? Listen, God, I all I'm saying about is, my grandparents picking me up, skipping. <laughs> Jesus, I'm gonna. That's when I die, you guys. It's gonna be like, and then my grandma came in with her curlers <laughs> on, and I don't deserve nice things in life. You guys, and I was I, a liar. Listen, man, I taught all kinds of kids, and I love them all. And some, literally this school, the thing that I was so grateful for is first of all, here I am this, like, I think at the time I was like 30 and I'm single. I'm from the Midwest and I was raised with both parents and like, like kind of this like quote unquote normal person who had, I think some ideas of how the world worked. And then I go in and I see like, oh, I don't know, a girl sitting in the office and I snapped at her and I was like, you need to go to class. And she's like, I'm here for a parent teacher conference. And I was like, where's, with who? And she's like, I'm, I'm the mom. And I was like, what the actual, she was literally 30 and she had a 15 year old. And I was like, and my head was spinning and I was like, I don't know how to, but like I saw parents working multiple jobs just to keep everybody in a one bedroom apartment. And like those kids got in trouble for stealing because I'm sure they were tired of seeing their parents work hourly jobs and they couldn't get cool tennis shoes. So they stole the tennis shoes and got busted. It's, it's, it's it's good to see how it actually works because I think people have in their head that like, Oh, it's just all people like not working or not trying or whatever. Right. I mean, most right. of the most of the at risk kids like at our school and that, their parents are just working poor. Well and it's and it's it's everywhere in the US. And then it's too. the other side. I had a very interesting other side, and I will not name names, but uh we had very, very, very wealthy kids yeah. whose parents had so much money and what they were was not ever present. They yeah. were never around. I feel so sad. And you give kids money and access and they're not around. The parents are not around. They're going to fuck up. I mean, one yeah. of my kids drove a G-Wagon. I had another kid that lived in her car with her mom and another kid drove a G-Wagon. Oh, and I was like, but I was so grateful because first of all, it put them all together and they were all humbled. So they yeah. all had to be in this school together. And, and hopefully like learn from each other. Learn too. from like, each other. They It was like- <laughs> Not just how to be a better criminal, but like- No, they really did. And it was so interesting. It was a really fun cross section. I felt so, uh, I, I really, it opened my eyes to the world and to not make fast judgments about what I think people, yeah. h- how life is for them. Cause I'm like, you don't fucking know, man. Until you sit across the table from somebody who has literally no idea where they're going to sleep at night yeah. or their little brother was, um, taken because he had to sleep on a, a filthy mattress and they, Aww. the, the brother was selling drugs so they could stay in their shitty apartment. Yeah, yeah, his dad yeah. left. Like these are tough stories that like yeah. kind of apply everywhere. If you look in your community at tough at those tough cases. My long winded point is that I wanted these kids to graduate, to get educated. And so my job was to, I, they, I said, they said, we need them to pass this test, which is a state test. And, um, they have to learn how to write a five paragraph essay. This, that I was like, great. Does it matter what they read? And they were kind of like, uh, no. And I was like, great. A board book. How about this? I let them read something they're fucking interested in. And so, I did. And I did have those kids who would like choose war and peace. And I was like, just one. And I was like, please, please tell me this book report is not 18 pages long. <laughs> but he, there, and then I had kids obviously love Twilight. And I had kids who wanted to read, a, one kid wanted to read a cookbook. And I was like, hey, man, if it's not, if you're not bullshitting me, if this is like real deal, yeah. I'll take it. Because I think at the end of the day, the most important thing you can give to your kid or to yourself is the, the ability to read and the ability to uh, choose to read, put the phones down, put the tablets down, grab a book or, you know, oh, that's, and take yeah. in information through um, that way because I think it does make you smarter. And I don't think it matters if it's Twilight or a book about I don't, I don't, boring data about 
um, 11 hey, countries. No, it's not boring. It's Listen, I don't think... I read so much on the phone. I get my news on the phone. Yeah. Like my husband is so bored because it's always talk radio or a podcast like when he gets in the car. Like, I know. She rolled your eyes again. I just am going to point out when it happens. I'm so bored. I get in Jen's car and I'm like, Ew, what is this? It's like, in Iraq. The Dow Jones. I and I'm like, <laughs> like this. I want to hear Froggy in the morning giving away some tickets to Dave Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's 104.7. I got She rich. loves the morning zoo. She I love- just does, you guys. That's the kind of person she We've is. We've got tickets to Dave Matthews. And we're going to take the 11th collar. Okay, I've got Jen on the line. That being said, though, my I had like big brain fog from COVID. Yeah, I know. Reading actual pieces of paper has helped my brain. It's true. And like taking supplements and stuff like that. But ha- reading it on paper is so good. And I will say... If you read like a romance novel and you read it uh, like on paper, you read that I, it does the same kind of thing for your brain where you're like seeing words, you're putting things together and yeah. whatnot. But I also think like normally I'm like, uh, book on tape, I don't know. But if it's like um, like an audible, like... Ooh, like a horny one? Audible means your ears. Oh. Like you listen. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I know, but I meant like an audible horny book. Like, are you listening to a romance novel just out and about in your car? And then his hand slipped around her breast. Of course. But and then they read it in a sexy voice. Yeah, it's not our voices, Jen. There's not Midwestern nasal. What are you laughing at, Trey? (laughs) What are you laughing at? We're like, and then he got in the car and he forgot to zip up his pants. And I was like, what do you think's happening, fella? He lightly caressed (laughs) the cheese that had fallen on her <laughs> cleavage. He, he was like, what are you going to do with that? I can still put that on a cracker. He used a nacho chip to <laughs> wipe up the... That is actually kind of horny. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I can't not... Look. I'm like, all right. If you, just, into the if you just have somebody else read that and not us, that yeah. might actually work. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, sorry, I'm so nasally. I know there's like, like science no, behind reading that, like, a book as opposed to reading your screen. But you can listen to... Um, you could listen to like... A, a, one of those books that I'm reading and it would just sort of be like a lecture or something. I know it'd be boring, but you would, I would still, I'd feel good about that because I'd be retaining something. From I only it. listen. I only, I only podcast murder and that hashtag I'm so hard podcast. So, <laughs> but you re-listen to. <laughs> I'm kidding. Listen, I just think um, like getting information somehow other than a screen is key. It is. There's something to it and I don't know what the difference is. But I feel mad at the screen because I can't see now and it has nothing to do with my youthful quality and age. She's she's too proud. She's no, too proud to it's turn the up conspiracy. the size on that phone. They're doing it on purpose. They're all in bed together. They they decided to the make glasses it. company and, and the, the phones. phones. Okay. You heard it here first. New conspiracy theory. <laughs> the oldest business in the world and the newest business. <laughs> Doesn't that not make sense? They were like, make them small. We'll make them squint. They'll need glasses. They'll buy bigger phones. It's true. I do like a bulk order of readers on Amazon, probably three it's, or and four And then I can times never find them. Nope. And they all get caught in my hair. So if I'm not paying like a good amount, although the ones you have that I took. Those are good ones, right? Those are, those black no, ones are I'll good ones. I'll order more. I'll get more. I like them. Those they ones don't I like. get in my hair. And no. I was like, oops, I forgot them again. I know. I know what's going on here. I saw my hairbrush at your house. Which one? The pink one. (laughs) (laughs) The yellow bowl all over again. It's the travel hairbrush. But I know you'll bring it on a trip and then I will steal it back. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. And I also have a makeup brush of yours and you can't have that back. I'm just flat stealing it. Okay. You, because you said you got new makeup brushes anyway. I did because I'm doing this. Here, I can't give you like intelligent information about what books to read, but I can tell you that I've been buying foundation brushes on Amazon in bulk. They're $15 for 10. And then instead of like having to like, Wash them all the time. I just use them like a week and a half or something. Like then you throw them away. You throw them away. No. Why? You gotta wash them. You can't disposable brush shit. That's gonna all end up in a in a freaking uh, waste bin. Uh, a waste dump. Wooden. Yes, it's like plastic. Ooh, but wooden is okay, right? Oh man, give them to me. I'll take them. <laughs> 
Why does Kristen all of a sudden have horrible acne? <laughs> Where did that come from? I didn't say I'm going to use them. I said I'm going to figure out a way to recycle them. Well, you know, I could save them. I could use them for like craft projects for the kids to paint stuff. You could give right? them to a preschool. Mm. They use them. There's <laughs> Why do all these kids have horrible acne all of a sudden? I don't understand. And I also bought, this would have ended up in a landfill. I bought for eight bucks at TJ Maxx clearance section, a uh, brush sanitizer that you guys, oh my God, I'm going to do an impression of this brush sanitizer. It's like this little box that you put like all your makeup tools and oh, like tweezers yeah. and stuff like that in. And then you close the top and it does the like infrared light or it's like, oh. you know, the tattoo thing, you know, or whatever. No, it's like a light that like kills all the germs. I don't like, buy it. You want a little like toaster oven thing. But you put it in there, you close it, you turn it on and it goes, sanitation and progress. <laughs> And I think it was a TJ Maxx because it was so fucking loud that nobody would, they'd be like, take this back because my neighbors are complaining. It is the loudest thing ever that like my husband hears it and goes like, ah! from like rooms away. It's like, it sounds like a threatening woman from like, I don't know, like. That's amazing. I, as you say that, I've had movie. the weirdest week of alarms going off. Like, w look how ADD I am. I'm like, let me just go on the last thing that was said. But we... <laughs> got water in our so we have a new electrical what do you call them fire alarm you know it's okay, all yep. it's wired it's not batteries and somehow our bathroom bathroom upstairs which is super freaking old and we need to redo it but who has that kind of cash um there was water that got through one of the cracks and it went down into the electrical oh, yeah. and set off the entire oh, fire alarm Ooh, and i'm literally that's dangerous it's right so it's loud and probably dangerous, and that's why it went off. And it was like, fire, fire, there is a fire. Please leave the house. Fire, fire. And I did not leave the house. I went and tried to crack open these 16 different <laughs> alarms. One by one, I did get on a thing, yeah. take it down. 16 of these suckers. And by the time I was done, I felt like the left side of my face was paralyzed. I hear them, I hear them being like, you know, she got 15 of them out and then she succumbed to the fire. I don't know why she just <laughs> didn't get out of the house. They had to have been getting hot. They were and like, hard lady, fire. We've told you 25 times. Why don't you save something valuable instead of trying to yeah, unhook no. the fire alarm? She just thought if the alarm wasn't going off, then everything was fine. <laughs> she could go so back to watching the reruns of. <laughs> 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 she could go back to reading her horny books by herself. Fire, fire, middle-aged woman, I'll wake up. I'll fix this fire. I'll make sure nobody knows about it, and then the fire's not even happening. <laughs> Save your laptop, dumbass. Get out of the house. I think what he was saying is water is mixing with electrical, electrical. wiring, which uh, will at least electrocute somebody. Then they would go, uh, it's lost on this one. We've lost our focus already. Keep it simple. Fire, fire. Does get it out really, of the... It sounds like the from the Jetsons. Yeah, it's like, that, fire, fire. It's very polite. It, I don't know. She's loud, and it's, it's, it might be my voice. It's loud and grating. Dear God, I know. I was going to say, they should have my mom go like, oh, my God, I think <laughs> there's a fire. Get everybody out of the house. And then everybody would just leave, you know. You know what? My, my <laughs> we should take my uh, my sanitizer for my brushes and have her be like, <laughs> "Fire commencing is in process. Get out of the house." I think that's a safe safe assumption as to why it was on sale at TJ Maxx. They're 1, like, percent. it works. It's just annoying as fuck. Yeah. Like you, you Don't deal with your fire alarm at DJ Max. Yeah, either, like fire, fire. <laughs> oh God. You know what we should talk about for a second, Kristen? Is yes, ma'am. The tour. The tour. Okay, got to talk about it. Yeah. Um, we're going to You're April fifth. Yep. Well, I'm just going to say it because these three are in a row. April fifth, we're going to be in Eugene, Oregon, at this really awesome theater called the McDonald Theater. Yeah. And then we're going to be in Tacoma, Washington. Which every time I go, I'm like, Am I moving here? At yeah, the I Temple Theater, beautiful. And then we're going to be in Portland, Oregon, which we haven't been to in a really long time, right? I I feel like we've been to Eugene and we've been to Tacoma, but Portland we it's been a while circumvented, and it was like one of our very first shows. Yes, we were flying to Portland when we did our swimsuit video. That's right, Portland, Portland Seattle. and Seattle. Yeah, and I was like, who's going to see this? Everybody and my ex boyfriends. Yeah, um, we're going to be at the Chesterfield in. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, in Portland, it's the Revolution Hall. 
Oh, okay. So, which yeah. I think is gorgeous. So, um, and, and then uh, just read the cities of the rest of them, oh, right. just so they um, know too. Friday, April second, Chesterfield, Missouri, at the factory. Saturday, April thirteenth, at Springfield, Missouri, in the um, Gilios Theater. I don't know why I'm doing this without glasses on. I don't know. Um, Here, just, Sunday, you can April. Just read the cities. Well, I'm just giving them dates too. God damn it. Go to I'm, I'm so we're Columbia, kind of Missouri. It. We're Sunday, Sunday in Columbia, Missouri. Thursday, Red Bank, New Jersey. Go to imomsohard.com. We're going to be Friday, April 26th in Glenside. Can't wait for that at the Keswick. Saturday, oh God, we're going to be in Munn Hall. Saturday, we're going to be in Tulsa. That's May 11th. So if you don't want this to be a rambling and you want actual information, you can just go to imomsohard.com right. for tour tickets. And some of the dates are close to sold out. So make yes. sure you get your tickets now. And, and if you haven't been to when I am I'm so hard show it isn't a podcast show which no we should say we should clear up it's a stand-up it's the both of us yeah doing it's a two-person stand-up stand but we also have these two parts that we're really excited so about one part that is new we're bringing it back we haven't yep. done it in about four years yep and it's a Q&A section which we had a blast oh in my. Vegas we had so much fun doing it yeah. one of my favorite questions was when she was like um what dry shampoo do you use or what do you do for a vaginal itch and I was like Lady, if maybe you have an issue because you're using dry shampoo in That's the wrong right. area, you're drying out. Yeah, you're maybe those two areas. worlds should not yeah. intersect. But we can we can give some help to people that way. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun for us to see like what everybody's talking about, and then we do obviously we go through mom bags. We that's always a blast, and yeah. then we have a two person stand up show, and it is about liking it's about being friends it's about being women yeah. it is about being Dudes moms come. yeah but it's mostly just a really rowdy fun stand-up show yeah 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 you're gonna have a good time and hopefully you tell us some part of your body hurts from laughing so hard that's our favorite compliment if you're so. on the fence do it come out i guarantee you're gonna be happy you did that's yeah. what we always hear is like oh i didn't know if i could swing it i had this thing and then i bought tickets and i bought tickets for a friend and it was the best thing i did and it's really less to do with us it's about the whole night that you get to be out and let it go for a minute you yeah. know yeah oh i could actually i can do this um this mom box here's a mom box mom box okay we got this message from Carrie Carrie Spoiler alert, did come to the show and brought her best friend who had never been to one of our shows before. Fun. They got together and met at the Vegas show. They What's the spoiler? Cities. Oh, just because she talks about the show. And oh. She goes, hey, ladies, don't know if you remember me, but I'm the one who had the OG I Mom So Hard merch at the Modesto show. Oh, my gosh. Yes. We've seen her like five times. Yeah. She's fantastic. We had uh, a meet and greet there, and she was there with her surrogate. Remember, we met the surrogate. That's right. Yeah. At oh Mountain Winery. God. So fun. Okay. I've been to so many shows from Mountain Winery in Saratoga, Thousand Oaks, During the Wildfires, Modesto, and more. Now I'll see you in Vegas this weekend. We already did that show, but my BFF and I are making it a girls' weekend. So do that, ladies. It's so fun. It's an excuse to get together. Yes, it's super fun. Yeah. We haven't seen each other in two years, and we're so excited. And then, you guys, she invited us to Betty Hanna, which we couldn't go. Right. But, but we, we were trying to. We were trying to. We did. We met. We've shown her. up to places. People invite us, and they're like to birthday parties. Yeah, they're we like, to hey, we're gonna be at this for a fiftieth birthday party. We're like, okay. And they're like, come hang out at this bar. And they're like, we you won't. And then we show up, and they literally look like what? They're like, what? Yeah. We're like, are you gonna? Sh so we didn't go shovel to out some of that champagne or what? But we got to meet these chicks. We invited them yeah. backstage and yeah. got to meet Super them and fun. do a whole bunch of photos afterwards. So get your girls. It doesn't matter if we're in the place where you live. Meet there. Drive. Yeah. Get Because these are kind of it. These shows, and we have a few shows in October, but for 2024, this yeah. is kind of it. So we it's also really appreciate your love and support. That's it right. means a lot to us. We're taking a couple months off because we've, we've got, got fifth, fifth graders, graders graduating from fifth grade. So I got to sell kind of rocket stuff. pops out on the street trying to... Get money for this freaking hat yeah, that she has to have. Track and field Somebody doing those spray on graffiti jackets. I'm like, we're, how much? Yeah, we're doing the hats. Yeah. We are too. They yeah. do that. And then they I get you. The they're like, you. for an extra thousand. You did? Did I you really get the did. guy? Yeah, there's a guy that does. I should give you Jen. You, yes, the, please. Give me oh. give me your person because the one that I have does bar mitzvahs and stuff. They'll oh my like, God. Do the hats Jen, apart, so. you guys should. He, those, you two Jens. 
that are like PTA. But what we need is we need more than one because they're going to do it while they're <clears throat> yeah, at the thing. That's what we have picnic, too. So, and yeah. then they get you, they're like, hey, if you just raise a little bit more money, the kids get to do this extra thing at their fifth I grade know, night. And I'm like, God, it feels like we've already got like Backstreet Boys performing. What else do they Jeez, need? I know. And I'm like, can't somebody just write a check for this? Like yeah. somebody just show off, okay? Oh, I don't want to. That's how I donuts roll. and pizza tomorrow after. I'm not going to, I'm not, uh, look, I think I would be a very good rich person. I'm not a rich person, but I do love like, can I, Pay for this thing and then you not bother me that's ever what I'm again. Saying. I, that's what I want to be. I want to throw money at. A, I want to be a throw money at the problem. Kind that is of me. Like, that is me. They don't want me there. They don't want me there. It's fine. Yeah. Like I'm really good in a like a security situation, but don't give me any administrative duties or uh, requirements for emails yeah. or dates of anything. I'll get it wrong. Like yeah. I'm not that. That's not my, not my strong suit. Need me to work work a MC or work uh, like security. Right. I'm your girl. We got a I'll fundraiser just give coming money. up. We got a fundraiser coming up, and uh, somebody messaged me, and they go, "Jen, can you bring wine?" I'm like, "I'm your Huckleberry." Yeah. yeah. How, we'll freaking bring wine. Yeah. Give me a price range. I'm. Yeah. I, I can do that all day long. Yeah. I get cornered with a somebody will come up with a clipboard and a pen, and I'm like, I know that's for volunteer hours, and I'm like, can I just give money? Can I give you? Can I? I have fifty dollars in my purse right now. Come, what does that get me? And How like, are we talking about this? Don't you have a hot flash? Kristen's got a hot flash that Boy, she's do I. very Guys, excited about. Just stop what you're doing. Stop reading your book. Do exactly the opposite of what I said and pick up your screen You know what again. another really great book to read yes. or to listen okay. to when you're driving is I Mom So Hard? <gasps> it It is actually we, really fun to actually, listen to. Yeah. We get a lot of messages where people are like, I listening to the podcast now because I listened to the book. We read it. We read the book. We read tape. it. And yeah. I think we've talked about this, but... Um, we didn't know what was going to be involved when you read an audiobook, which, as you can imagine, when you've written a book, New York Times bestseller, what's up? It's what? still available yeah. on Amazon. Uh, uh, There's a you, lot more crying than one would think. Oh, my God. And I don't like to cry. I was like, there are four people behind this glass. It's a, like you can imagine, like a sound recording booth. And so yeah. you're in this little thing. You've got these headphones on, and they have the the words up for you and they're personal yeah. and all of a sudden I look up and there's like these two like tech dudes and like a woman I don't know very well and I'm like talking about my aunt who has special needs or mm. I'm talking about the relationship I have with my dad or criticism from my mom <laughs> and all of it very personal fire fire <laughs> Kristen if you just take a few more steps around the house you'll hit your workout goal shut up yeah that's right so I go I was sitting there and I remember thinking like, I'm going to start crying right now. Like this is hard for me to read yeah. and I don't want to do that in front of these people. And so then I did this weird thing where I was like talking like this and they go, oh, yeah. I think what they were trying to say was you got to figure out an emotional lane and then be in it. <laughs> Stay in that but, one. But like you can't ride the fence here. You need the listener whiplash. Yeah, you know, we're, we're all, uh, we are uncomfortable. And I was like, okay, just let me ball. Uh, and then I would come back. <laughs> I did. Well, my dad passed Your away. Your dad had just died. Yeah. yeah. And then, so I had, there's one paragraph and I kind of forgot about it. And I know I, it's in the dedication and in the, or there's a talk where you're talking about the tour too. Maybe, yeah. I can't remember which part it was, but they were like, uh, we, you, why don't you just take a break? And I was like, no, I can do it. And they're like, uh, we don't think you can. Actually. Yeah, you're like, getting snot all over our microphone. It, yeah, and people need to be able to understand the words that you're saying. I'm like, yeah. I, I got this. And then finally I was like, maybe I can do it tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah come back, come back. Yeah, but it it's was mostly funny, you guys. It it's is like, really funny. And it was really fun to read it on our own because I felt like it did need to be us. Totally. Because it can't be, I mean, listen, when we write a horny book, we're going to definitely have like some somebody, English hot siren. Somebody, and it's going to be the horniest yeah. book. I mean, I've already got ideas. like Somebody who's a little bit like a mature, sexy lady, right. not a nasally. Uh, Mi Middle-aged Midwesterner. Yeah. But, but I think we can bring that sexy back in that if we're like, look, you know I brought out the crock that, pot. Yeah. And my V-neck was almost under my neck it yeah. was i was sweating in places i didn't know i had you like my <laughs> i was nipping through my puffer coat <laughs> as i carried that crock pot in through the deep deep snow 
I trudged slowly My moon boots. <laughs> My moon boots. Leaving on. a trail of sexy behind I me. I slowly slid behind the wheel. <laughs> of my Pacifica. <laughs> of my Chevy Traverse. <laughs> Four wheel drive, you know it. I took off my earmuffs I and I let my baby hair flow. Into a difficult parking <laughs> spot with expertise while holding a koozie. I think every guy listening to this has a boner. Boner town. Sorry boner about town. that, everybody. My husband's like, so you've got a crock pot. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, God. Um, okay, so uh, on our, our into... Our book's going to be called Crock Pots and Cock Pots. Crock Pot, Crocks and Cocks? Crocks and Cocks. That's, That's our new book. <laughs> That's our next book. That's our horny book. You guys think we can't write sex? We can. We we we'd have to refer to I'm some earlier do research on that also. Um okay you guys, this guy's name is Sam Hartman and he played oh. for um Notre Dame and he looks like he is the lead Holy in Braveheart. Moly. He played for Notre Dame. What? Thank played you. What football? Court is this quarterback. A he played he doing? the. He's running right now. Do you, okay. he, he played the accordion. Wow. He's he in the combines. The accordion. No dummy. He's in the. He's in the combine. This is the. Why did you bring an accordion into it? You're hitting my Midwest said, tickler right there. <laughs> <laughs> she brought out her accordion. Oh. Oh. Well, they just come from a check festival. <laughs> And the cheese dip had gotten between her <laughs> the breasts. The beer ox had yeah. become quite <laughs> sultry. Look at that mofo. Okay, so he Holy, played for he Notre Dame. I mean, he looks like a young Jason Momoa. Is who oh, looks like I think he's right. actually, if I dare say, hotter. I think he Whoa. is. He's going to be He's gonna be a, a Hollywood star. I'm going to say it right now. He doesn't want to be. He wants to be a quarterback. He's not going to be a quarterback. He's going to be in the six-round draft pick, just going to say. But I think maybe he'll play like, like maybe a running back or something. But... He is so hot, and his hair naturally blows in the wind, and he's got a full beard, and he looks 35, but I think he's 25, and I think he'll look 35 until he's 85, okay. so we've got a lot of time with this guy. So is he now playing on an NFL no, team? No, he'll, he'll be drafted soon. Oh, okay. Um, When's the draft? I don't uh, even know. Is that? That's a good question. August? When does that? Uh, no. I How's don't know. Sooner, right? Um, this is him explaining his hair. Some some girl on the sidelines, of course, because he's so hot. They're like, oh, you know, I don't know what's your like hair when he's not running. No, I know. He doesn't give him a break. He just did the freaking combine no right there. No breaks. No breaks. No break. He was wearing a crop top before. Like, you, you can't be fair weather. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay. oh, geez, Louise. He looks like Gaston from I Disney. I know. That's Holy what I'm shit. saying. Wow. He is so hot, and he's going to be on our radar. Are we following him on Instagram? Of course. And then, well, no, I'm just following around him because I'm not going to go like straight she on. Do- I'm play I, cool. She does that, Here- you guys. And then I go follow him, and then. No, I, only when we follow certain things do I get irritated. Oh, did you unfollow No, her? I would never do that. I have not. Anybody you followed, I stay on. That's not true. That's that's absolutely true. I took your dance, freaking dance studio see, off because they see. put 18 posts a day. I'm You're like, so I don't want to see anymore. And I'm not that impressed if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> We don't go there your, anymore. Your social <laughs> is not great. I mean, yeah, Jen doesn't even go to that wasn't. studio anymore. I'm not following them. Yeah. Um. And also, I want to say real quick, big shout out to Jason Kelsey, who just retired. retired and his speech was so lovely. And I was a disaster the whole time. I'm also a disaster watching Kylie watch her husband retire. She's like so gorgeous and so cool. And yeah. I he, that guy represents a lot for a lot of people and i just read you'll love this that um there was a vet who um uh was suffering he said that he had really handled i don't know if this is a thing but he this is in his words he was saying i'd been to war and i was i was able to compartmentalize some of the things that i saw and some of the some of the things i did he goes i don't know what happened but in covid it brought back a lot of these memories. I was having yeah. these flashbacks. I couldn't stop my PTSD. <laughs> I was in a super dark place. I was home alone. I was staring at the wall. And mm-hmm. he goes, I just got on a Facebook page where Jason Kelsey is, whether it's the Eagles team page or something. And he just said, like, on his own is sort of, he goes, I'm just having a really hard time. I'm a vet and I'm I'm struggling. And Jason Kelsey reached out and called him. 
Aww. called him, called him and said, yeah. are you okay, man? And that's why Jason Kelsey to me is not only supremely hot, but yeah. literally like kind of this thing we need right now. He is representative yeah. of a thing we need right now, which is sort of this warm, big, he represents both sides. You he's can be all- A dad of girls. Yeah, and- that's, you can be all the things. Like I get like, you know, there's this divide where it's like, you're trying to emasculate men. Well, you have these hyper, would be hyper masculine men, the Kelsey brothers, who cry and talk about their feelings. feelings. And- are sensitive to women and girls. And like, did you see Travis Colin um, Taylor? Um, yeah. That she, what did he say about her? He said that she was... Um, like a queen or that like, like that, that people she, she love her. She was the biggest her. thing ever. Yeah. What, like he just is And he like, dresses, you know, audaciously if I show. Yeah. And, but, and I, but I, I Jay, like it. But I, Jason and then, like shows up and like flip flops and his wife's like, you need to change your shorts. Like yeah. there, there's something about We're him all that, feeling that too. it's that yeah. Philly thing too that they, I just love. So, well, so the other thing is I sent Kristen, um, which is porn for us. Um, this video of them chugging beers at a oh, Cavs game. And yeah. You want to talk about Jason Kelsey, man, I've seen people drink beer very quickly. That like guy I did it in one gulp. Yeah. And there was a lot of foam. Very impressive. Stop talking horny. <laughs> Imagine what he could do to okay. a crock pot. Imagine what he could do with an accordion, guys. <laughs> hey, did we just podcast? Did we just podcast? Cheers, lady. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>